Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Range. Today we're in the A10C Warthog, and we're going to continue our series of employing the gun, and this time we're going to demonstrate a, a technique known as the high angle strafe. Now, the high angle strafe is a, a gun's run on a target attacking from a high dive angle, anywhere from 30 to, say, 45 degrees nose down. Now, since you are at a high dive angle, you need to start this out from a a moderate altitude. Right now I'm going to demonstrate this from around 10, 11,000 feet when I initially roll in. And since you are in that high dive angle, you need to give yourself time to pull out of the dive and not press this down to an extremely low level. So for this strafe, I'm going to plan on firing around five, no more than say four or five thousand feet slant range. And we'll get into some of the visual indications that you get and some of the things to keep in mind that will help you out on the high angle strafe. So first, let me begin by setting the cockpit up for a gun's run. So I'm going to go master arm to arm, a gun pack arm switch to arm. My green gun ready light illuminates. And I'm going to put my HUD into the gun's mode by depressing the master mode control button once. And there's my, oh, I'm sorry, I already had it called up. Let me go cycle it through, CCRP, nav, and back to guns. So now I'm all set up. I have my reticule display. And let's, uh, talk a little bit more about some of the considerations that uh, you have to take into account for this high angle strafe. Now the target that I have in mind is out here in the distance. It's a group of three tanks that are more or less in a triangle formation out there. And the first thing that you may notice is that you know, just with the eyes in the cockpit flying around that there's no way to really look down and just be able to at a glance identify targets. You're a long ways away. To pick these guys up I have to zoom all the way in and even then, you know, unless you know exactly what you're looking for, they're hard to pick up. So when you initially roll in and dive on the target, it's very important to know exactly where these guys are. I mean, it's not impossible to do visually. I mean, you could, you know, get a good idea and then roll in, look for some kind of a feature on the terrain to focus on, pick them up during the dive, and then engage them. But you want to give yourself, use the aircraft to the advantage to give yourself as much of an advantage as possible. In this case, I just happen to have a steer point that is steer point three for this mission that is right on top of these targets. They're T-55 tanks. So I have a steer point that I can use that's going to give me in the HUD an indication of where these guys are. So I don't have to pick up the tanks visually. I can just dive on that steer point and it's going to give me an indication on the ground and then look around that steer point for individual targets. So I'm going to demonstrate that technique first. So let me get set up here and I'm set up. I'm going to be diving at about anywhere from a 30 to a 45 degree angle. And I want to fire no more than say 5,000, 4,000 would be pushing at foot slant range. Okay, so picking these up visually and you're going to see on the HUD a box with a dot. That's going to be where my target is. So rolling in There's my box for the steer point. Now I start to look around for individual targets. I see a very good candidate right there. So let me get set up, stabilize. I'm going to go pack one to stabilize the aircraft. I'm going to wait for about 4,000 feet. Let me go trim nose down a little bit, restabilize. Looking for that tape to come down, 9,000 feet, six, pull up, pull up. five, two second burst. Pull for the horizon, throttles up, and get out of this target area. So I got a little bit unstable, you know, I think I, I might have gained a little bit too much airspeed. And the tr I was fighting the trim a lot on the way down, and that's uh, a consideration as well. You want to start the dive with a, you know, the higher you are, compensate with more da nose down trim. Because in the dive, as you pick up airspeed, the nose is going to tend to rise and that time it was rising enough that it actually overrode the pack. The precision attitude control could not keep it stable so I had to disengage it, continue to trim nose down, re-engage the pack and it was just a little bit unstable. It wasn't the steady uh, steady tracking of the target that I that I like. But hey it did the job. So that's the first demonstration and that was very very easy because I had that indication of where that target was on the ground by the steer point. But 
you're not always going to have, and in fact I would say that you're hardly ever, maybe in a case like this where the mission is set up so that the steer point corresponds with a target, you're never going to have that exact reference. So, you again, you can use the aircraft to your advantage. This time I have the targeting pod called up, which I'll go over in a lot of detail. Uh, that might be the next kind of mini-series of this, is going over the targeting pod or some other big major system like that. But let me put it into air-to-ground mode. And we'll just say for argument's sake that I've spent some time with the pod identifying this target location. And hey, what do you know? I just cheated and slaved the pod over to that current steer point. But, let me make this be, or make it my uh, sensor of interest. But there you go. I've got the targeting pod now pointing in that same general area. So I'm going to uh, go to the next steer point so I don't have too many indications right there. So now what I'm going to have on the ground is a diamond in the HUD that's going to tell me where the targeting pod is pointed. So I'm pointing my pod in the right general vicinity. That's going to get me in close. And then as I dive, I'm going to use that diamond as a to help me out and give me an indication of where generally I need to be looking for these targets. Okay, so I'm going to come around and get set up for one more pass. And let me, uh, i tell you what, let me get a little bit more separation here. I'll show you another technique that can help you out on uh, giving you a rough guess on what your dive angle is. So I will be right back. So now I'm coming around for my final high angle straight pass on these guys. I just wanted to get out this far to demonstrate a technique that I sometimes use to gauge the proper dive angle when I'm trying to hit a certain dive angle on a target. Now I'm setting off slightly offset from the target area. I know that they're out here in this area. In fact, I can see them right there in that little notch between the canopy rail and the main console. Now that little notch is where I like to bring targets down and this is just a technique that I, I like personally to use because I know from experience from this altitude if I roll in and the target is about right there on the main console, that's, about to be, that's going to be about a 30 degree dive angle and once it gets down here to this notch, that's about 45. So I'm looking at the proper dive angle right now. So I'm going to go ahead and roll in on these guys. And remember that I had the targeting pod set up so that I'm going to get a diamond. Like you see, to give me a estimation of where they are. So I'm tracking. 6,000. Two second burst. Pull for the horizon. Throttles up and do some evasion. So, I mean, that was another example, and that's another means that you can use to give yourself an idea of where to look on the roll-in is to set your targeting pod up for that location. So in addition to the diamond that time, and they kind of caught me by surprise, but I had that set up also as my, my SPI, my sensor point of interest. So I had the diamond and uh, another box, kind of like I did when it was strictly the, the stir point that was there. So there's just all kinds of indications, and that's what the C model is all about. It gives you all kinds of neat stuff that you can do to help you out, so you don't have to do everything visually every single time. So folks, that's going to wrap it up for this high-angle strafe demonstration, and I've got a few more topics and a few more gun sites to go through, and of course, all kinds of neat A-10 systems, not to mention all the other great aircraft that you get with DCS World to cover here eventually. But if you did enjoy the video and found it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, and leaving a comment in the comment section below. Your interaction and your help with this is surely much appreciated, and I will see you next time.